Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here. My name is Mary and today's video is going to be my wrap up part two for December. So in the month of December, I actually read 15 books in the first 16 days. So I do have a separate wrap up talking about all of those books, which I will link for you here. But I'm just gonna quickly wrap up the nine books that I read the rest of the month. So I did not keep up with my book a day thing that I had going on there for a minute. Um, I didn't really expect to. It was kind of an accident that that happened. I ended up like finishing a bunch of books that I had started in November and then just like being able to speed through a bunch. I still read a lot in December, don't get me wrong. I also DNF'd two books in December. They're both nonfiction books. One is Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance by Angela Duckworth. Basically, Angela Duckworth is some kind of scholar. Um, she does have like a genius level IQ, but she basically is saying that like talent isn't what gets you places. It's your ability to like persevere through hard situations. My frustration with this book was that she talked, she used the word grit constantly, but she never defined the word grit. And she, at least for the first like 15, 20% that I read, could not give examples of what in the people's behaviors that she was analyzing made it gritty. Also, I just have a hard time with the idea that like grit is what got people places and not other things that contribute to success because I do think that having grit and persevering through hard times and like being able to pick yourself up when you're struggling is really important. Like it's an important thing to have. But I also think that without a baseline talent level for things, it's gonna be a lot harder for you. Also, she talks about how like she failed math the first time she did it. And then I think she ended up being like a mathematician or whatever. She had like family members who could get her tutors. She was at an Ivy League. Like she had all of these things in place for her and I'm not saying that like that means she didn't have to work hard I'm just saying you, I feel like with a book like this you really have to acknowledge everything and every angle and it just felt very disingenuous to read for me the other nonfiction that I DNF'd is Shit Actually by Lindy West and this is a collection of essays by Lindy West she I think is a columnist and she got really famous for Shit Actually which is about love actually and so I wanted to read this in December and I did actually end up picking it up Christmas Eve and I listened to the first couple of stories or essays. She has one about like, honey, I shrunk the kid. They're all about movies and like why movies are good or bad. And basically just like explaining them, spoiling them, being like, this is so ridiculous that, the, that this happened. I DNF this for a couple of reasons. One, as I mentioned, I'd only seen a few of the movies. So for the movies that I hadn't seen, it didn't really like do anything for me. And two, it wasn't as funny as I wanted it to be. Like I expected to like laugh out loud because there are so many things about love actually that I feel like you can pick apart and like make fun of. But the way she did it, I just didn't find funny. And I feel like she missed a lot of what I would make fun of with that movie and focused on things that I'm like, I don't really think are that like terrible about the movie. Ultimately, I just don't think it was for me. I think if I had seen more of the movies, I might've liked it more, but I just didn't want to continue in it because I didn't care about it. I read a bunch of books for a Western reading blog that I will link for you. It was the last video I did in December. In that blog, I did have four books that I finished in the second half of the month for it. And I frankly didn't love any of them. So Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy, which I realized I've been saying Cormac MacArthur. I know, I don't know why. That's my Berenstein Bears. I really thought his name was Cormac MacArthur until like, the other day I was at a, a bookstore and they had a bunch of copies of Stella Maris, which is a book by him. And it was like Cormac McCarthy. And I was like, oh my gosh, is that a different, like, is it a guy who just has a name that sounds the same, but is different? And I looked it up and it's all the same author. And his name has always been Cormac McCarthy, but for some reason in my head, he's always been Cormac McArthur. So if you notice that in that vlog, I'm really sorry. I don't know why I thought that was his name. Also, he passed away this year, which I found out, which is very sad. So rest in peace to him. I hated this book though. I don't really want to go into it more. It was like incessantly violent. It's a Western about like these, this kid seeing all these like horrible things. And it's just like any kind of violence that you could imagine against like children, women, animals, each other, like themselves. It was just horrible. I just really hated it uh, personally. So I also had two, three stars for that vlog. One is West by Karis Davies. I also realized I call her Karis Davis for a lot of that vlog. So sorry about that. It was a really short book and it was fine, but um, I can't really say much more about it than that. It follows two perspectives. One is a father who, is going to the American West and he wants to like, there have been bones, like giant bones that have been found. So he wants to find the creature that these bones belong to. That's his storyline. And then you follow his daughter who is 10 when he leaves and you follow her through like pubescence kind of. Um, and she has like, a creepy neighbor. It's a whole thing. I thought it was fine. I also read Inland by Tia Obrecht for this vlog. The more I think about it, the more I feel like I liked the concept of this book a lot. I just, and I liked the writing of the book. I don't know what about it was just not quite hitting for me. But this again follows two perspectives. One is Nora, who is a frontiers woman 
and she has lost a child as a baby like many years before this book starts so she sees her child as if the child has grown up with her um so it's like a ghost kind of but it's not really a ghost it's just her like imagining of this child and then there's a guy who rides a camel um he how do I explain this he was an outlaw and he ended up meeting up with this group of Turks because uh, apparently there's a group of Turks in America who brought camels over for some war or something. I looked it up briefly to see if this was a real thing and it was, it is, it is a real thing. So he like joined their caravan and when people die around him, if they touch him or if he touches them, he like not absorbs part of their soul. That sounds really like woohoo and you don't really know what it is, but he like his brother died and his brother had like a stealing problem. And so now every once in a while he gets this like itch to steal and he thinks it's like his brother coming out in him um so stuff like that uh but yeah it's about how their storylines converge it's a really interesting concept i didn't find it that interesting of a book i thought it was very slow and very boring so i gave it three stars it was fine good on the better side of good but still fine you know a four star book that i read for that blog is upright women wanted by sarah gailey and this is a very short book it's like 200 and something pages 176 pages it's not even 200 pages is that a novella i don't know but it is in a dystopian future, but it's like kind of modeled after the Wild West. And so this girl wants to become an upright woman, like an upstanding woman in society. She's gay, uh, which means she's not an upstanding woman. And so she goes to join the librarians who best I can figure are kind of like nuns or considered like nuns, but really they're not, they're also gay. And so, so she's like with them. Here's the thing. I, this book was a very like snapshot thing of like one scene that I feel like would make a really interesting concept for like a show or a book series or like more books but as it was I didn't really love it but I, it had so much potential for me like I really liked the concept of it I really liked the imagery of it I liked the writing of it like I wish this had been like a fully fleshed out novel if that makes sense but those are the books that I read for that blog um I also read and I recently watched the adaptation of Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam and I may or may not do a full adaptation review of this book. I have some thoughts, but if I do, it'll be relatively short probably, which is fine. This is a, hmm, what is it? It's like an end of the world apocalyptic book. It's t it's um, classed on Goodreads as fiction, thriller, and mystery. Um, I don't think it's a thriller. I really don't know if I think it's a mystery. It is kind of like, it's like a literary mystery or like a literary thriller maybe, but it's about this family who wants a break from their life in New York City. They rent this house for the weekend in Long Island or on Long Island, whatever. But they're out there, it's kind of the middle of nowhere. And one night they get a knock at the drawer and it's this black couple who say, hey, you're renting this house from us. And we like, there's been some stuff happening in the city. We just wanted to be at our house. And so then it's kind of like a standoff between these two families. Um, and then also you're trying to figure out what's going on in the world at large. Here's the thing, I liked this book. I really didn't like the ending of this book. It just like kind of ended out of nowhere. And I think part of the problem with me saying that, I don't hate that all the time, um, but I did not know this book was about to end because I was listening to it as an audiobook and just sort of like doing my own thing. And then it just ended out of nowhere. Um, and I could have checked how long was left on the audiobook, but like when you're reading something physically, you at least know the ending is coming. Um, I really did not know that the ending was coming on this one. And it was fine. Like, was it creepy? Yes. I wish there had been more concreteness to any of it. I do think if you liked Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay, you would like this as well. Both of those books I read and I like wanted to like, but just thought were fine. I think this is kind of along the same vein as that. It's not quite what that book is. That book is way more horror leaning, but it's, a, it's, they both have a similar feeling of unease. Although I will say the similar feeling of unease is throughout this whole book. Whereas in that book, it goes from like unease to terror kind of. But anyways, that's my spiel on Leave the World Behind. I thought it was fine. The next book I want to talk about is The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. I gave this book five stars. I loved it. It's a marriage of convenience, region, re, regency romance. I almost said regional romance and I don't know where I was going with that. But it follows this girl, Emma, who is a seamstress and this guy who's the Duke of Ashbury. Is that where it is? Yeah, Duke of Ashbury. And he has... He was in a war and so he's got like scars on his face and his body and he was supposed to marry his sweetheart she decided she couldn't be with him anymore so they broke off their engagement and the seamstress emma made the dress and he needs to pay for it now because she made it and he didn't um like pay her for he's like got one payment left so she shows up in his library in this wedding dress that she made and she's like look i made this dress 
I need your money. And he's like, okay, you want better? Why don't you marry me? <laughs> and uh, once you give me an heir, you can go live in the countryside and do whatever you want to do. And she's she agrees to the marriage, but she wants more of a relationship with him. So it's sort of about that. Yeah, I loved this book. It goes back to like, I like fake dating. I definitely now I know I like marriage of convenience. I just think it's very fun when the characters like don't really want to be together, but they also both do want to be together, but they don't think the other one wants to be together. Something about that dynamic really works for me. I also, um, I'm about to talk about another book that has this in it, but I really like the like, this is so horrible. I like the like scarred love interest who thinks that like no way this beautiful woman will love me because of how messed up I am. Um, and I like when she does love him. I don't know. That's like, the, I realized that's my thing. That's a thing that I really like. It's not like a requirement, but I read two that I was just like swooning over. So anyways, uh, the other one that I want to talk about is I read Lover Eternal and Lover Awakened from the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. So this is book two and three. And book two follows Rage, who is one of the brothers. And uh mary i believe is his love interest who is a human woman and then the third one follows sadist and bella who bella is also a vampire sadist is a vampire and yes his name is sadist i don't it's spelled with a z though <laughs> edgy the black dagger brotherhood if you don't know what it is it's a paranormal romance series that follows this group of male vampires called the brotherhood and they are their racist protectors so they're like the strongest the biggest and i don't know exactly how they're chosen but they're marked at some point in their lives to be of the Brotherhood. Um, we're sort of learning more about that as the series goes along, but I still don't really get it. But essentially each of these books primarily focuses on one of the guys in the Brotherhood and his love interest. On the flip side of that, in this world, there's also these things called lessers, which are what the Brotherhood is protecting the vampires against. And lessers are humans who have sold their souls to the Omega, who is like the devil, I suppose, um, or he's like evil incarnate, and they are trying to kill the vampires. Unclear why? Except for that, I believe the Omega and then the Scribe Virgin, who is like the goddess of the vampires, are like kind of in a war with each other. That's all I can really tell you. That's what I've gleaned from the first three books. It does kind of feel like J.R. Ward is making it up as she goes along, um, which I don't hate. That's fine. But I immediately picked up book three after finishing book two because Sadis and Bella have something that happens at the end of book two, and I like really wanted to get back to it. But Rage and Mary. Rage is a vampire right? He's in the Brotherhood. And he has this curse that's been put on him where he turns into what he calls the beast. Uh, but it's essentially like a dragon bear monster when he gets like really emotional. It happens when he's turned on for some reason. It also happens if he's like really mad. Um, and it's a very dangerous thing. So that's what he's doing. Uh, Mary is the neighbor of Bella, who is a vampire. And... How does this happen? Oh, they find this boy who is also a vampire and Bella knows that he has the mark of the brotherhood. His name is John, My John Matthew, John Michael, something like that. And he's not really a boy, he's 23 years old, but for some reason they always call him like the kid, son, the boy. I don't really know why that is. It's kind of weird and infantilizing and I don't really like it, but um, he's a vampire basically, but he doesn't know he's been raised by humans. He's also mute, so he can't speak. Um, and so Bella, Mary's neighbor sees her talking to him and she's like she finds out that he's a vampire because of some things on him she decides to take him to the brotherhood to have them like look through like figure out what's going on and Mary accompanies them because she's the only one who can speak sign language so she's got a sign when he wants to talk to the brotherhood he could just write things down I don't know why he doesn't do that but anyways Rage is responsible for wiping Mary's memory but he doesn't because he's in love with her so therein lies the largest flaw in this series uh the men meet women one time and are like so obsessed with them and I know that that can happen but like the insta love thing really doesn't do it for me so then things happen and because Mary is involved with rage she has to go live at the compound because the lessers are coming after her it's a whole thing Bella and sadist at the same time that Mary meets rage Bella meets sadist uh and sadist is the brother who's like effed up and you find out a lot about him as the books go on but there's like rumors that he likes to essay women and like he murders women and he only feeds on like human prostitutes that he then like kills and like all these horrible things about him and he just sort of leans into it but obviously you find out that it's not true um which you know from reading it because you're like there's no way that this author would make him fall in love with a woman and then have him be like that but anyways it's a really good series i feel like i've talked about this for a long time 
I'm surprised at how much I like them because again I gave the last I give book two and book three five stars I gave the first one three stars and honestly I was like I don't know if I want to continue the series because of how the romance went in the first one. First one is the blind king whose name is escaping me now and Beth it's a whole thing but anyways I'm really enjoying the Black Dagger Brotherhood I probably won't talk about it as extensively going forward but I am liking it a lot and then the best book that I read this month by far well okay the best book that I read in the second half of the month by far How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix I love this book okay and what's weird is there were parts of it that I was like I don't really know if I'm that into this so this is a book about a brother and a sister and their parents have died and they have to pack up their house to sell it but they have their cousin who's a real estate agent come by and she's like this house is haunted you guys have to figure this out and in very like Grady Hendrix style there's a good amount of like gross horror but it's also like there's a lot of levity in his works that I've read and I really appreciate that the tone really works for me um I really liked the haunted aspect it's it's less a haunted house book and more a haunted doll book just know that going in um I will say I hated the brother for most of the book and then you get something from his perspective and it kind of explains it but for me he never fully recovered like it gets to the point where a character is so terrible that I'm like I can't forgive them you know I just can't I don't forgive that so that's how the brother was for me in this book Louise and I don't remember his name and frankly it doesn't really matter uh Mark I really recommend this book I know it was nominated for the Good Reads Choice Award this year. I don't know what ended up winning, but it was really good. I understand why people don't love, like I, I get that he would have a divisive writing style, right? Because there is a lot of levity in his books, but I think it's great. I really, he, this is the second book that I've read from him. And the first one I gave four stars and really enjoyed. And this one, I just like, I just loved. That is the last book that I'm gonna talk about in this wrap up. I have a feeling this has been kind of a long video, which is kind of ridiculous because I only read nine books, but I think I spent a lot of time talking about the Black Dagger Brotherhood, so I'm sorry about that. I will hopefully remember to include timestamps so you can jump around if you would like. If you made it to this point in the video, leave a house emoji for How to Sell a Haunted House in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. I do post two videos every single week, and I am coming up with my end of the year content in January. I already have my first video in that series posted, but I will have a best books a worst slash most disappointing books. Um, I might do most surprising. I haven't really decided. And then I'm going to recap my physical TBR. Um, and I have like reading stats and stuff as well that I need to put together and film a video on. So if you're interested in any of that content, it is forthcoming for me. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and I will see you in another one very soon.